Hey guys, what's up? It's Engineer here, and I just got finished moving all of my stuff in here over to Austin, Texas, so I could wrap up my final semester here at the University of Texas at Austin. So for all you Longhorns out there, hook em horns, baby. So with this last semester, uh, I will be focusing primarily on doing all of the circuit development as well as the control systems analysis to control R2-D2. I'm gonna be knee deep in studying with books like this space engineering book for senior design, this thermodynamics and propulsion book for my propulsion class, as well as advanced materials so getting to learn a little bit more about how certain plastics, metals, etc., work together. And while I'm doing all that, why not? Let's uh, study for the mechanical FE exam. So it's safe to say that I'm going to be a little bit busy uh, and spread thin these next couple of months. So today's video uh, is not to talk all about theory or anything. I'm going to do something a little bit special here today. I'm going to more formally introduce you to my friend R2-D2 right here. So over the past couple weeks, I was working on getting all of the mechanical components installed into this droid. And so far I have all of the basic animation pieces installed. So I just wanted to give you a quick tour of what's going on inside of this robot and just to talk a little bit more about the next steps and how the control systems are going to actually be integrated into this droid. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump over and take a quicker look at this guy. So for today's discussion, we're going to do a bird's eye view and sort of work our way from the top towards the bottom with the discussion. So basically, as we have on the top here, we have the head assembly that's able to freely rotate along the body axis here. As you're probably noticing, there's still some surface work that we're performing, but as you can kind of see as well, we're getting pretty close to that smooth and consistent surface that we need to create a movie accurate looking droid. So that's pretty exciting to see all that. So what we'll go ahead and do now is we'll take off the head and we'll start to look at the actual components inside and see how everything works. So let's pull this guy off real fast. And you can see here those X frames that I was talking about to drive the head turn assembly. So there's a couple parts that I'm still printing, but for now, the idea is that these X-frames will allow this to spin and be able to keep the wires uh, sort of in check uh, as it spins around, keeps the wires maintained properly, keeps them separating outward as the head spins plus or minus 180 degrees. Uh, and whenever it returns back to zero degrees, it will be able to pull the wires to a more central location. So it keeps things from tangling up, which is very important for this type of application. So uh, let's go ahead and swap over here. So here is the neck, more or less. So I'm still printing out a lot of the components for the head slip ring assembly here. Um, but you can see a lot going on here. So this red you're seeing here is the PLA that's going to be acetone treated to create a smooth sliding surface for the X-frame to be able to rotate along to create a very smooth surface. The best way to think of this is this is, a, this is a customized 3D printed bearing for the head because it's really expensive to create a custom bearing of this size. If you look closely, you'll notice here, this is the bottom body fixed X-frame. And if we zoom in here, so let me try to zoom him in right about there. So if we were to zoom that in, you'll notice this D shaft right here and this is where the output for the motor is that drives the entire head turn assembly. So as you can see, the head turn animation is about 90% constructed. And there's just a couple parts here and there that I have to install, but bottom line, I'm still, I have the motors installed, I have them ready to go. So in terms of doing control systems design, this is more or less ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and swap views to a side view. So we can take a look at the center leg assembly and the leg fold assemblies and see how those are coming together. All right, so now we're in the side view profile for R2. So just to show you some pretty cool features here. So one really cool thing just about the frame real fast before we go on the inside is you're noticing all of this gray here 
and how all of the cracks and all of the layers from the 3D print are starting to be filled in. So I'm getting pretty close and actually getting all of the surface completely finished for the frame. So once I swap over to doing all of the panels and all of the little uh, doors and details that fit inside these little holes, everything will look really crisp and it'll look really professional. So that's pretty exciting to see there. Anyways, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and twist them on over here. All right, so now that we've swapped over to this view, let's real quickly talk about the leg fold assembly. So you're probably seeing this guy right here. This is the motor that will be driving the entire leg assembly that will rotate along this coupler right here. So I haven't installed the gears yet, but if I turn this over like so, let's see if that looks pretty decent in the camera. So yeah, if I turn it over like this, basically I'm gonna have a shaft that comes through this frame right here, and there'll be another shaft that comes out, and there'll be two gears at a 90 degree angle that'll be rotating to increase the torque output so that you can deliver a lot of load onto these legs without much effort coming from the motors. So that's more or less the philosophy of design. So then another interesting aspect, so let me go ahead and bring this guy back up here. He still has a lot of uh, work to be done. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the camera and I'm just gonna kind of walk around and look at the inside here to talk a little bit about the center leg assembly. So let me go ahead and grab this guy here. Um, so let's see if we can get a pretty good view here. So if you look pretty closely, you'll notice this guy right here. So this is the center leg assembly minus the foot. So this will be the whole leg that'll come up and down from the robot. Uh, I can't really move it right now with one hand, but just to give you an idea of how this all works, these are those pylons from the center leg assembly. So this is from the back side, and this pylon over here is from the front side. And there are these casters that are mounted to the center leg that allows the center leg to ride up and down in the body so we can actually deploy the middle leg whenever R2 goes from his 2-3-2 positions. So for him, if we look closely inside here, there's the motor right there. And at the end of the motor, there's gonna be a small gear with a gear rack that's gonna be installed in this wedge. So let me come around here. So this wedge right here is gonna have a gear rack. So imagine a gear that's just rolled out into a linear path, and there'll be a gear coming out of this motor that will basically pull this up and down along the pylons. One really interesting lesson learned uh, as we were building this up is if you look closely, you'll notice the center of gravity for the center leg is right about here. And what we're doing is we're basically pulling on this center of gravity from this point here. So what happens is a massive torque that builds up right along this area, which creates a lot of binding, which makes it very difficult to translate up and down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and print another one of these pieces of the frame. So look closely this crossbar here. I'm gonna print this again and flip it. So I have a second motor on this side with the gear rack on this half. So they'll have two motors working together to pull this up and down and the load will be equally distributed. So that's a really important lesson I learned trying to design this, which I'm, so I'm pretty excited to actually get down that path, but that will come later whenever 2020 comes around the corner. More or less, that is the big components of R2. So what's important to notice here is there's motors that are installed inside of this. So we have the head turn motor, we have the two leg fold motors, and we also have the center leg motor here. So what's good about this is I'll be able to actually connect up my Raspberry Pi, buying the necessary driver components um, and et cetera, to actually be able to get a algorithm and an architecture developed for all these motors and driving them effectively. I'll have that side of the robot finished. And when it comes time, as I start to build this up again and getting things ironed out, it'll be really easy for me just to go in and actually control all of the motors and control all the actions uh, without having to do a lot of debugging in, in between all the mechanical design. So yep, that's more or less all of R2 so far. Well, that's everything I have for you guys this month. I hope you all enjoyed this short little update here on R2D2. He has come a long way since the beginning of the summer and there's still plenty more to come 
So it's just exciting to finally now see a fully built structure with some components where I can actually go in and start to actually put parts together, test out components, and actually making this guy animate. So I'm very excited to get to those steps there. Anyways, if this is something that you're really invested in, uh, I am a college student, which means that I do not make a whole lot of money. Most of my money goes to the university and to all of these crazy textbooks and stuff that I have to buy uh, in order to get the full professional educational experience. So as a matter of fact, I've started a Patreon. And if you find this all interesting, please sign up and donate if you can to my cause. Uh, it would definitely help a bunch with getting the materials and all of the components to actually build this guy to complete fruition. As usual, I also have social media handles. Uh, you can check out both my Twitter and my Instagram down below. I frequently update them with just stuff that's going on throughout my life, with school, with the robot, etc. So if you're interested in following me a little bit further, I strongly recommend you follow those accounts and keep up to date. And plus, if you've got any questions, you wanna ask me something, I'm more than happy to talk with you over my social media accounts. That's probably the best way to reach out to me. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for checking out this installment of this vlog series I've been working on. Uh, it's going to probably be a while till my next update comes around. However, I'll be sure to let you all know of any crazy updates or anything significant that happens in these next couple months. I know as soon as 2020 comes around the corner, I will be returning to this guy and progressing through him very hardcore. So more to come. Thank you all so much for following me so far on this progress. Uh, Anyways, stay frosty out there and take care, guys.